Okay. So let us uh, continue with exercise number one. Exercise number one, part B. This time, the difference is that you have three numbers. How do we deal with three numbers? It is still very similar. All we need to do is the same thing. Right now, 27, 63, and 207. 207. Now, this is for part B. Okay, same thing. We try and find the lowest common prime number. The lowest common prime factors for these. So what do we see over here? What is the lowest common prime factor? 3. Can it be 2? How do you look at it and tell that it cannot be 2? Hmm? Odd numbers. If it is odd number, it cannot have a factor of 2. How do you tell straight away that hey, 3 is a factor? Do you have to divide? For example, how do you know for sure that this is divisible by 3? Anybody has a trick or a shortcut? Okay. What is your shortcut? Is it louder, louder? Okay, so we think says that, hey, uh, 207, if you look at the digits, the 2, the 0, and the 7, you add them up, what do you get? 9. Is 9 divisible by 3? Yes. Therefore, this number is divisible by 3. Who knew about this method? Okay, so this is a very useful way to check whether it is divisible by 3. So 63, 6 plus 3 is? 6 plus 3 is? 9. Ah, can divide by 3. 2 plus 7? 9. Can divide by 3. Okay? <coughs> this only works for 3. There are some other methods for some other numbers, but that's not our focus, okay? So, for now, we know that they are divisible by 3. So we, we are left with 9, um, 21, and 69. Okay. Next common factor that you can see. What is it? 21, you know you can divide by uh, 3, right? How about 69? You can choose to add them up. 15. Ah, 15 is divisible by 3. So yes, we can divide by 3 again. So you get 3, 7, and 21. Ah, uh, sorry, 23. Now looking at all these three numbers, are there any more common factors? No more. So we stop here. Okay, we stop here. So the HCF of these two numbers, uh, sorry, these three numbers, 27, 63, 207, is 3 times 3 equals to 9. These numbers over here. Can? So we have now covered two methods to find HCF. What do you prefer? Do you prefer index notation, which is what we mostly did, or do you prefer this repeated division? Go ahead and think about it, try the questions, and you will have a preference at the end of the day. Okay, let's take a look at this example over here. So the greatest number of children who can attend will be the highest common factor of 72 and 45. A. 72 equals to, I want to find highest common factor. Two methods for you to do uh, prime factorization or you do the repeated division. I prefer prime factorization. 2, 36, 2, 18, 2, 9, 3, 3, 3, 1. So 72 is equal to 2 power 3 times 3 power 2. Okay, next one, 45. 45. I cannot divide by 2, so divide by 3, 15, 3, 5, 5, 1. So 45 is equal to 3 times 5. Look carefully at how I'm writing it. Huh? I am deliberately leaving a space over here. I'm deliberately leaving a blank over here. You know why? Because I want to be able to compare twos and twos, threes and threes, fives and fives. I want to be able to compare. So from here, HCF. HCF of 72 and 45 equal is, don't write equal, very confusing. So remember earlier on, we want, yes? Three. 
3 to the power of 2, yes? Oh, sorry. 3 to the power of 2 times 5, thanks. So the HCL of them, we want to find common factors. In this case, what's the common factor? Are there, are there any factors? Uh, is there a 2 inside 45? Is there a factor 2 inside 45? Don't have. So doesn't work. Is there a 3 inside 72 and 45? Yeah, how many common 3's are there? 2 of them. So, 3 squared. Do we have a common 5? Don't have. So, answer is 9. I can have 9 uh, people coming for my party. Such that all of them will get the same number of um, chocolates and candies. Okay? <coughs> So now we are ready to do part B. Hence, find the number of chocolates that each child will receive. So like I say, I don't expect just 72 divided by um, 9 equals to 8. Give me some statements. Number of chocolates is 72 divided by 9 equals to 8. Done. Is it clear? When you read my work, is it clear what I'm doing? And it should be the same for your own work. Regardless of your method, I should be able to read and understand what you are trying to do. The moment I have to guess, that means the presentation can be improved, which you must improve now. Finding the um, 420 and 504, so 420, divide 210, 335. If I make mistakes, please let me know. So 420 equals to 2 squared times 3 times 5 times 7. Okay, next one, 504. 63, 3, 21, 3, 7, 7, 1. So 504 is 2 power 3 times 3 squared times 7. Okay, notice the way that I'm writing it, uh, I'm deliberately leaving a blank for the 5. So that it's easier for me to compare. Okay? So from here, to find the HCF, sometimes you can, I mean, uh, some of you may find it useful to draw a line like this and write HCF at the bottom. So it becomes quite neat. And then we just need to compare from the top down, every row. Oh, sorry, every column, what are the common factors? So let's start with number 2, the prime factor of 2. How many common 2's are there? How many common 2's are there? Is it 1? Do they both have at least 1? One? 1 of uh, 2? Have, right? Do they both have 2 2's? Have. Do they both have 3 2's? No. So in common, they only have Two of them. That's why we say take the lowest power. Okay, if you are unable to see this, it's okay. We can always expand everything out. So this um, another way of doing it is to list everything out. So 420 is 2 times 2, then um, times 3, times 5, times 7. So I'm leaving a lot of space just in case the other side requires it. Okay, so I've got 2 times 2 times 2 for 504, then times 3, times another 3, then times 7. HCF. Take note that the blue and the red ones, they are equivalent. They are the same thing. So I'm going to take down all the common ones. This is common. So 2. This is common again. Times 2. This is common. Times 3. This is common times 7. Okay? If you are unable to do the one in blue, it's okay, you can do the one in red. But eventually, I hope you can do the one in blue so that you don't have to write so much. Because in blue, I've got two square. Just comparing what is the uh, similar ones. Okay? So two square times times 3 times 7. And this is our HCF. And this will give us 84. So the number of boys. 
equals to um, 504 divided by 84. Put the equal sign in one column. And we get the answer, 6. Yes? Smallest number of groups. Smallest number of groups that can be formed with the same number of boys and girls. Interesting question over here. What if I change part A, um, the greatest number of groups that can be formed to become the smallest number of groups that can be formed? And the rule is that in these groups, they must have the same number of boys and the same number of girls. Right? This is the classic case of why we always ask for highest common factor. We don't ask for lowest common factor. Because the lowest common factor is always one. Do you agree? The lowest common factor is always one. So if I have one group, then my this group doesn't have a different number of boys for per group and doesn't have a different number of girls per group because it is just one group. Okay, so uh, in a way it is it is not a useful question. Similarly, we're going to talk about this next. Lowest common multiple. Have you thought about why um, your primary school teacher right, didn't ask, didn't teach you how to calculate the highest common multiple? Right? They always tell you highest common factor, lowest common multiple. Why they don't teach you lowest common factor? We answer that already because it's one. Why do they teach you what is the highest common multiple? Is there, is there ever a highest common multiple? For example, 2 and 3. What is the lowest common multiple? Lowest common multiple, 2 and 3. Multiple, 6, right? What is the next multiple? 2 and 3. After 6 will be? 12. Next will be? 18. It gets bigger and bigger, right? Can I find a highest number? Cannot. You go on forever and ever. Okay? So that is why it's just um, highest common factor, lowest common multiple. So that's a good start to our LCM. Over here. Hmm? Hmm, okay. Okay, now lowest common multiple. Here we have a list of all the multiples of 30. We have a list of all the multiples of 36. Very familiar numbers. Huh? Earlier on, we were using 30 and 36 also, and we found that the highest common factor was 6. Now we are dealing with multiples. We can see that the uh, common multiples will be, where are they? 180, 360, and there will be more. 180, 360, and so on. It continues. Uh, but the lowest common multiple for these two is 180. <coughs> Alright, so similar to HTF, uh, we are not going to list because the numbers can get very big. We're going to find some other methods to do it. <coughs> and my first one is prime factorization, listing down the product of all the factors. So here, um, let me rewrite this, and you are welcome to do this also. I, I like to put them in order 2 square times 3 square. Because you see this 3 is a little slant, is a little to the right hand side, right? I like to put them in very neat columns like this. Okay? It's easier for me to see. So I, I prefer to do it this way. Okay, so now the LCM, very similar to HCF. But take note, HCF, we only find the common ones, right? This time, LCM, we become very greedy. Whatever appears, I am going to grab it. Okay? But you can take whatever is available only. You cannot take too much. What do I mean by that? Okay, let's start with, let's consider the twos over here. Let's consider the twos. 30 has one, two inside. 36 has two of them. I'm going to choose the larger one. 
And which is the larger one? 36. He has two twos, right? So I will write down at the bottom, two square. I will choose the larger one. I'm very greedy this time. I don't just want a common one. I want the one with the higher power. Can I follow the difference? Okay, next. Let us compare the trees. Which is the one with the higher power? Three square. Put on three square. And the next one. Hey, this guy doesn't have a five. But I'm very greedy. I'm still going to put on a five. So now this is my LCM. Two square times three square times five. Which is 180. <coughs> So by doing so, I do not need to list down all these numbers. As long as I have the index notation, that means the prime factors with a power multiplied by the prime factor with another power, as long as I have the index notation, I can find the LCM and HCF very quickly. Okay, so yeah, this time we take the highest. <coughs> so um, similarly, I'm going to skip exercise 7. We are going to use exercise 8 to practice our usage of index notation to find the LCM. So the lowest common multiple or smallest common multiple of A and B. So part A, I like to write them down neatly. So for A, I've got 2 square times 3 times 5. For B, I have 2 times 3 power 4 times 5 times 7. And I draw one line across. I write LCM equals two. So let's go through this together. We want we are now greedy. We want the LCM. For the twos, which one appears the most time? The for A or for B? For A. Yeah, so we just write out whatever we see in A. So we've got a two square multiplied by what is the highest power when I compare threes? When you compare the trees, which one has the higher power? B. So it is a power 4. So times 3, power 4. Next one, 5. Both of them have power 1. So I just run out 5. And finally, 7. Write down 7. So here we have LCM of, using our calculator, 11340. Can you imagine if you don't have this information? You're going to list everything out. It's going to waste a lot of time. And it is very likely that you'll make a mistake. Okay, so this is very um, useful. It's very powerful. Now let's try for part B. <coughs> this time, uh, because I'm lazy, uh, I'm going to change this to part B. And I write down C at the bottom. 3 squared times 11. Okay, so I'm leaving gaps because C doesn't have 2, doesn't have 5, doesn't have 7. So one line across, LCM equals to, let us compare the 2's. The highest power in this case will be 2. So I have 2 squared. What is the highest power for 3? No. What is the highest power for 3? Ah, so we are now 3 to the power 4. Next one. We've got five, and I can. I am sure you can tell already, lah. The rest of them. That's uh, seven times eleven. Right. Should we use our calculator to find out this? Way? Yes. C got five, ah. Oh. Sorry. So over here. Five to the power of two. Thanks for pointing out my careless mistake. So for C, it's 3 square, 5 square, and 11. Okay? Now, should we use our calculator to evaluate, meaning to write down the final answer? Need or don't need? Can you read the question properly? Need or don't need? Mm, yeah, can you highlight this word? Index notation. Index notation means our final answer looks like this. This is our final answer. The moment you use your calculator to evaluate and then you give me a, a correct answer, <coughs> you will get it wrong. Because I want to see whether you know what index notation is.
Okay, uh, let's do the next one, question 9. LCM of A and B. LCM. Can you do it straight away and tell it is 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5? Can you see straight away that this is the answer? Oh, of course, you have to evaluate. So 8 times 5 is 40. 40 times 9, 360. <coughs> So here I am doing part A without um, putting them in order because I practice enough already. I can visualize it. Hopefully you can do it by the end of this week also. So you don't have to rewrite everything. So now for part B. LCM. Can you try doing it mentally? Compare all the tools. Uh, what is the largest power for two? Can you write it out? Compare the three. So what's the largest power for three? the same answer as me? Same? Okay, our lesson will end here today.